Hello and welcome to Ticket Manager's All Access Interview Series, engaging leaders from across the sports marketing spectrum to identify and explore critical issues in the business of sports, entertainment, sponsorship, activation, ticketing, hospitality, and more. I'm your host, Jim Andrews, and joining me on this episode to discuss trends in media and brand partnerships, uh, diverse business models, and more is Larry Friedman, co-president and chief business officer of the Los Angeles Football Club, LAFC. Welcome, Larry, and thanks for joining us. Oh, it's great to be here, Jim. Thanks for having me. So many things I want to get into with you, but let's start off with, um, you know, just looking at what's been happening at LAFC, you know, in, in addition to all of the, the changes and, and, and upheaval that we've all been through uh, recently, you, you in particular have had major turnover in your Jersey partnership, in your media partnerships, plus you're looking for a new uh, naming rights sponsor for the stadium. So you got a lot going on. And I'd like to start with the, with the TV deal, uh, because some might say that you've kind of bucked a trend. You moved from having a streaming service your first three years in YouTube TV to now partnering with traditional TV broadcasters. Uh, in the new agreement. So can you discuss the reasons uh, why why you made that move? Sure. And I don't think we're experiencing anything that other teams and clubs across sports aren't also experiencing, which is, um, you know, things are more fleeting Mm. and longer term relationships are harder for brands to commit to as their life cycles, you know, work through and their needs and desires and objectives change. And YouTube TV uh, was a great partner. It was a, a great brand for us to put on the front of our jersey when we launched as a club in MLS. And that kind of brand awareness that came for them through being on our first team Jersey and the kind of impressions that that drove across all media platforms uh, was really valuable to them as an early stage platform that was an alternative to over the air television, cable television, dish, direct TV. But as we got to the end of the three year relationship, And they were looking at what was moving the needle for them as a more mature platform and what their needs were going forward. You know, for them, there were more cost effective ways to drive subscriptions to their platform. And the brand awareness had been established. I like to think it was only us, (laughs) but they, they did sponsor that little thing called the you know, the fall classic a a few times, the uh, World Series, where, you know, the presentation on the screen looked like you were watching YouTube online. So I think on balance, for three years, they were a great partner for us. Uh, Matt Ross, in particular, who led that effort for them is a a great human and will be a friend for life. Uh, we, We think we delivered for them, they delivered for us. But You know, we totally understand why they came to the decision they did that, you know, scaling down in the partnership was the right thing for them to do. They're still a partner. Um, They're just not one of the, you know, top two partners that we have, which is our jersey and our building. And as far as how that impacted our English language local broadcast, in, in fairness, or in the most politically correct way, as they say, Jim. Um, I think we're much better off now because as an expansion club in a very crowded market that is Los Angeles, where there are two of everything in major league level sports, we were the second MLS team joining NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL. We've got the WNBA, you've got UCLA, USC, you know, it's hard to break through all of that and you're competing with the beach and the mountains and theme parks. LA is kind of the place to be and there's so many choices. It turned out that for an emerging brand trying to capture people's attention, 
being behind a play, a paywall on an up and coming platform. You know, we were a startup, they were kind of a startup right. and we were both looking for an audience. And so for us, we feel like being on a local broadcast on the old Fox regional network here, which is now Bally sports and also doing our weekend games on a station that is part of the Fox family, KCOP 13, we feel like we have a chance to reach a much broader audience. So uh, we, we, even though we may be bucking the trend where everybody's unplugging, uh, we feel like this was a better decision for us and a better place for us to be where we are in our life cycle as a club. It, it makes sense. And, and I think that, uh, you know, the, the story of that evolution, if you will, or progression with, with you and, and your first original partners really points to the fact that you know, people who sit in your seat and, and the people on your team, there, there are a lot of interests to balance, right? And, and, and as time, time goes on, uh, those interests shift, whether again, it's a media partner or a, or a sponsor, and you really just have to, uh, to kind of be able to navigate, navigate that. Appreciate you walking us through that. The other, in terms of your brand partners, the thing that stands, one of the things that stands out is there are, you've got a lot of names on that roster that are not what I would call the usual suspects. Um, you know, you look at uh, Flex, Nectar, Postmates, uh, you know, these are not the, the, the Cokes and the Budweiser's and the, and, and the other, you know, folks that, that we've all known for, for decades uh, in our business. And I'm just wondering, was there a deliberate strategy to, to go kind of outside some of those traditional categories and, and the traditional players? Or is it, you know, is that just kind of serendipitous that that's uh, where you ended up making your deals? I would love to be able to tell you that we're just that smart. <laughs> but I, I think we are, we are not unique in that we are always looking at the usual verticals or industries your beverage partners, your auto partners, your airline partner, the financial services and banks. But you also have to be looking at emerging brands, things like the Postmates, the DoorDashes of the world, you know, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, uh, the DraftKings, FanDuel, gaming is coming, uh, esports, And it's interesting that with a lot of these non-traditional brands or like Nectar Sleep, who's a new great partner of ours, I think what we're seeing is that brands, everybody's measuring everything now. Right. And it's no longer a relationship of, hey, I hung a sign for you, wasn't that great? And I'm pretty sure that that drove business for you. It must have, it was a big sign and it was beautiful. <laughs> so, and now especially with online advertising and social media platforms and you know curated partner content that we create together and we push out on our channels and they repurpose on their channels and you know the ability to put out email blasts to either our ticket holder base or our broader mailing list and have the opportunity for the recipients to click through and learn something about nectar or postmates you can measure all of that and so i think we're finding that what's really resonating with brands is that they want to engage with our fan base. And they know that we have an incredibly passionate and loyal fan base, though we're only in our fourth season. And so when we get into these discussions, they want to understand how best to actually engage with our fan base in the same way we talk about how we built the club street by street, block by block, one by one, individual discussions and relationships. And so you take a brand like Flex. Part, you know, Flex is 
doing a big launch of their electronic, uh, or rather their uh, battery powered power tools. They have this concept of the job site athlete, people who work in the trades are athletes and the way they put food on the table and support themselves and their families is by performing on the job site and the tool in their hand just like a bat in Tatis's hand or Tatis Jr's hand you know makes the difference and they out of the gate have wanted to engage with our fan base knowing that there are people in our supporter section, the 3252 and everywhere else in our building who are tradespeople. Sure. And they want to connect with those folks. And so that lends itself a bit more to the non traditional, you know, corporate partners. That makes perfect sense. And it really leads me into a, another question that I wanted to ask you in, in terms of your relationship with the fans and, and you mentioned your your strategy of almost kind of that one-on-one -on -one building a fan base obviously fan data comes into play there and it's you know it's all the buzzword and uh we talk about it probably probably too much but it, it it's critical uh, to running an organization like yours and i'm wondering just what i've seen so many different strategies that teams and clubs have towards you know where they're sourcing the data who they're partnering with to to analyze and, and actually uh, do something with that data i'm just curious as to what what's the main approach that lafc is taking the number one thing that we have done in my mind is to partner with the far and away most robust ticketing platform on the planet, which is our good partners at Ticketmaster. And Ticketmaster was pushing digital ticketing before anybody else. Now everybody's doing it. It's kind of this, the, 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 the minimum requirement coming out of the pandemic right. is no more printed tickets, no PDFs, digital tickets, right? But what that enabled us and other venues to do was identify more individuals who were in the building, mm -hmm. right? Back when we were kids, <laughs> uh, if you had season tickets to the Red Sox, the Chicago Blackhawks, the LA Kings, you got some kind of package, you know, before the season started that had your four, you know, heavy print stock tickets in a box or some other, you know, form of presentation. And when you went with your three buddies or your wife and another couple, the only thing that the team who sold you the tickets knew was that you were there. Right. They only knew you. So through the digital ticketing, which you know is connected to a cell phone number or an email address uh, and some kind of account, um, you're able to now identify if it's adults all four people because this crazy thing would happen and we learned this some of from some of our brethren in MLS who you know we weren't open yet so we hadn't had the experience but they had started to move to the fully digital ticketing with alternative with Ticketmaster and and they were capturing data that you know Jim had been at the match last Saturday and they would reach out to Jim and say, it's great that you came. We really hope you come back, whatever, only to find out that, you know, they'd get a response like, what do you mean? I've been coming for the last three years. You just didn't know it. Right. And so I think knowing who is in your building, however you get there, is the most important thing that you can do. And at the same time, the ability to track, hey, wait a minute, you know, Jim has four season memberships with LAFC. 
in one of our premium club spaces, but he never comes. You know, he's flipping the tickets every match. And we know that he's not just giving them to his friends because he's listing them on TM Plus and we see where they're going. Tracking and matching, right? Uh, our good partners at Fanatics on the, on the merchandise side. Knowing who's in market and buying LAFC hats, scarves, jerseys, jackets, warm-up pants, and seeing that, you know, Jim is an all geared up guy. Like he's got, he bought four hats. He's got every, you know, the home jersey, the away jersey, the alternate jersey. He's got the warm ups. Like this guy is a fan, but he's never been here. But he lives here. We have to fix that. Right. And then there's, you know, then there's the reverse where you have people who come to all the matches but we don't see them buying merch and how can we curate an experience for them? So we're doing better on the merch. And the same thing goes with, you know, food and beverage, you know, with electronic payment, uh, you can kind of follow people around in a big brother fashion. That's a little bit scary if you think a lot about it, but in order to really move the needle on the business, these are the things you have to do. And, you know, we didn't coin the phrase, one of the credit card companies did, but membership should have its privileges. And within that is a more tailored experience that makes the fan feel better in terms of, hey, these guys care. Like, I don't, I, and, and people aren't always putting together how these things happen but the ability to know that a ticket holder you know likes pickup trucks that the last three cars he bought were pickup trucks and our good friends at ford probably want to sell them an f-150 or we know that you know we have a fan who historically buys you know, Garth Brooks tickets and other country music tickets um, it, at venues in LA. And when we book a country music act, isn't it great to let that fan know early that there's going to be a presale opportunity? Right. Well, and, and the Ford, uh, the pickup example to me is very interesting because what I've seen with a lot of sports teams is, you know, getting finally getting a hold of that that data and, and figuring out how to use it in, in the ways you've been describing
you can offer uh, the, the members? Yes. So um, it, it, it's definitely, we are a different animal relative to any number of the other clubs in MLS. Um, some of the clubs play in NFL stadiums um, where they're just a tenant. Some of the clubs play in stadiums where whether it's the climate or other factors, the other content is less frequent than in our situation. And for us, we, we built Bank of California Stadium with our partners, our owners' money. There is not public money available in the state of California for venues like this. And so the only way that the economics work is if we activate the building as close to 365 days a year as possible. As you said, you know, with a little bit of preseason, maybe a friendly before the season starts, plus the 17 regular season matches, and then hopefully a playoff match or two or three, that's about it. And so you can only charge so much for those tickets and there's only so many of those tickets you can sell. So we purposely designed the stadium to be as conducive to a touring musical act or a one night musical act as possible. One of the only things we kept from the old Los Angeles Memorial Sports Arena that used to sit on this site was the ramp the ramp that went from street level down to field level. And so, you know, whether that semi truck is pulling into the Staples Center, the Great Western Forum, or Madison Square Garden, it's a similar experience for the crew. And we have our own staging solution, we have our own rigging solution. And so we've tried to make it as seamless as possible for touring music acts to come in. We built club spaces that can be used for anything. You know, you wanna have a sit down dinner for an anniversary, we can do that. You wanna have a corporate meeting with a podium and AV, we can do that. You wanna do a film shoot, commercial shoot, a movie shoot, we can do that. So, you know, we've hosted all kinds of events, sporting events on the field. We've also done, um, you know, some parties on the field. We've done TV show premieres, movie show premieres, charitable balls, you name it, we'll do it. And it's, that, it's interesting in that it definitely provides something extra to your corporate partners, you know, whether it's a Heineken or a Pepsi or some of the other consumable oriented partners, because they see that their product is going to be utilized, not just, you know, those 17 plus preseason postseason times, you know, People are drinking Heineken, whether it's LAFC, it's international soccer, it's lacrosse, it's a dinner party, it's Mumford and Sons. We're, we're pouring Heineken, we're pouring Pepsi. You know, as you mentioned earlier, we are in the market for a new naming rights partner. And it certainly makes a difference to the brands we talk to that it, we're not just talking about the LAFC fan base. We're talking about any number of different fan bases that they are going to be able to reach. And it's not just the 17, 18, 19, 20 MLS events that will cause people on broadcast, in print media, on social media to be talking about Bank of California Stadium, City Field, whatever it is. Uh, it's this wide variety of things. And that that matters. Sure. That matters. How is the progress going on your on your negotiations or your or, or talks with uh, with any any potential partners? Are you getting close or 
we we hope we're getting close. But, uh, I am sure, as you know, and many of your other guests have told you, you know, you think it's going great until it's not. And, you know, to be cliche, it ain't over till it's over. It's one thing to land a new front of Jersey partner in the middle of a pandemic when you can say, look, we're still playing. You can see the guys running around in the Jersey with YouTube on it and now look on social media and you can see the, um, the, the way this thing is generating impressions and Hey, that could be you. And here's the Jersey sales. People are still buying jerseys to wear at home during the pandemic. It is a bit different when I say, Jim, you know what you really ought to do is commit for 10 years for a lot of money to put your name on our building. And it's really too bad that you can't you can't come to an event and actually see what it's like when there are people in the building. So, um, you know, we often talk about how the single greatest weapon we have in our sales toolkit is the live experience. Sure. Come join us, hear it, see it, feel it, full sensory experience, because once you've come to our building for a live event, you're hooked. Right. And so we feel like we're making really good progress. And, you know, we reopen the state reopens for full capacity at outdoor venues on June 15th. Our next home match is on June 19th. So we think that things will really pick up steam from there. And I don't know if you saw yesterday, we did round two of the announcement of the MLS All-Star game. Yes. At the stadium where MLS All-Stars will play Liga Mex All-Stars uh, in August. And, you know, so things are really coming back and there's that momentum. Um, so we feel really good about it. And, and I do realize that it's an unfair question because I myself have been involved in, you know, planning the announcements of deals that never happened. So I know that's, uh, you know, literally having the, the press releases drafted and then somebody saying, guess what? It's off. So uh, I appreciate uh, having to wait till the last minute. But um, before I let you go, Larry, the other thing I wanted to ask you about um, is your interesting and diverse ownership group that you've got yeah. at LAFC. And I'd love to hear how you leverage them because you've got a really interesting mix. You've got you know, big personalities, well-known personalities, Will Ferrell, Magic Johnson. You've got some sports business executives, people that, uh, that who are listening to this podcast, names they would recognize like Rick Welts and Brandon Schneider from the Warriors. You've got a whole bunch of uh, tech and venture capital guys in there. So I'd love to hear how you kind of uh, are able to utilize them. I like to say that the group was not put together because we just wanted to take a good class photo <laughs> and it was not put together because, gee, we really needed, you know, Tucker Kane and Lon Rosen from the Dodgers and Rick and Kirk Lacob and Brandon Schneider from the Warriors to write those checks. It was much more, and this I, you know, a lot of the credit for this goes to Peter Goober because he's just masterful at the way he pulls these groups together. And the idea is everybody's in it because they want to be in it. They have personal attachments. You know, Will Farrell grew up playing soccer. His wife played collegiate soccer and his sons all play club soccer. He loves the game. He's in this because he loves it. It's, it's not a gimmick. And when he's not working, he is at the matches and he is pretty rabid about it. So the idea in the group is, depending on, you know, the background and the availability, the expertise of the various individuals, they know and have known since they invested in 2014 or you know, some of the folks have come along since, everybody knows that they are going to get a phone call 
And it, unfortunately, if you're Brandon Schneider at the Golden State Warriors, you get a phone call from me, you know, most every day. Uh, same thing with Lon at the Dodgers and Tucker. Because as an executive running a sports organization in a big market, why wouldn't I call Lon Rosen down the street who only sells, you know, 4 million tickets a season at Dodger Stadium? And, you know, credit to Lon and Tucker and Stan Kasten and the folks from Guggenheim and Goober is in there and Magic Johnson is in there. You know, what they've done with the Dodgers since it was acquired from Frank McCourt has been spectacular. Yeah. So, of course, I'm going to bounce ideas off of them. And what Peter and Joe with Rick Welts's leadership and Brandon's and, you know, Kirk Lacob's, what they've done up north with the Golden State Warriors and the new Chase Center, you know, it's the same thing. Like if, if you have the chance to ask them what their advice might be, you should ask. Why wouldn't you? It'd be, <laughs> it'd be foolish not to. And then, you know, you get down to, you know, when, when we need advice on technical matters. Well, Chad Hurley, who's a co-founder of YouTube, might be a good person to ask those questions. Okay. Or if you have questions about a particular, you know, vertical and industry and who might we want to be talking to, or, hey, we're talking to this brand. Do you know somebody over there? Uh, you know, who better than benchmark capital partner, Mitch Lasky, who's invented in, who's invested in some things like Uber and Snap, uh, or, you know, Larry Berg, our lead managing owner, or Bennett Rosenthal, one of our uh, co-managing owners who are in the private equity space. Mm -hmm. And it just goes like that. Or Mike Mahan, who, you know, is the chairman of Dick Clark Productions, who might know something about producing a show. <laughs> um, so, you know, and it's, it's different frequency. You know, I, I, I can't call Magic Johnson every day and say, you know, it'd be really great if you showed up over here, or if you could, you know, give us a soundbite for this. But, you know, the, he, he, he's been unbelievably gracious with his time, whether it was the announcement of our stadium site, the groundbreaking, the ribbon cutting, you know, he took part in uh, our Jersey unveiling event, which we did on Zoom with some uh, frontline workers. Mm -hmm this past spring. And, you know, the same thing with Nomar, uh, Garcia Parra and Mia Hamm, you know, you, they're not available every day. They, they work, they have other interests, they're busy people, they're raising families, but they love the club. And when there's something specific that they're just the right people for, they are there and they deliver. So for me, and for the other folks on the executive team, it's incredible. <laughs> it's just incredible to have those kind of resources, you know, to provide advice, provide guidance, and to actually just deliver. And whether that's, you know, being somewhere personally um, or something different, it, it, you know, for, for me, it's a, it's a game changer. What an advantage to have all of that at your fingertips. So, not bad. <laughs> not in, not at all. Uh, Larry, I appreciate your time and uh, just you, you've been a great guest. Um, you know, your your enthusiasm for what you do is is infectious, and I think that uh, our viewers will really appreciate that. I hope they do. Uh, makes me want to want to get out to LA and 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 see a game, or see a match uh, at your stadium. Hopefully, uh, sooner rather than later. But uh, just again, appreciate the time and uh, and all the insights that you shared. My pleasure. Thank you for having me and. You know, as uh, Jerry Glanville used to do for Elvis, there will be two seats at the box office every <laughs> match just waiting for you to show up. <laughs> there we go. I appreciate that. All, All right. right.
<laughs> thanks again. And on behalf of everyone at Ticket Manager, thank all of you for watching and please join us again for the next episode in our all access interview series.